What's up, you two? It's your boy, Meta Bro J, representing the squad, the crew, the Super Meta Bros. And I'm back at you today with an updated deck profile to my personal favorite deck that has been sending shockwaves around the world. Just to play, it's, it's very fun and also very competitive. Now that you look at it, I don't think Dragoons is going to stand a chance to this. My updated Toon Deck profile for the September 2020 format. This Toon Deck, it means something to me, it means a lot. Like I said, I love playing the deck. It's fun all around, very nostalgic. It's pretty good when you get a victory from this deck, so check it out, stay tuned. Everybody out there, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and if you want to stay updated on what the Super Meta Bros are doing and the content that we're putting out, don't forget to hit the notification bell, and that'll always inform you guys whenever we post up new videos. All right, before we get into the deck profile though, I just wanna say we're in September of 2020 and COVID-19 still running rapid uh, all around the world. Do not let it demotivate anybody out there. Continue to live your life the way you wanna live. You know, you gotta do what you love. You gotta enjoy what you do because if you don't, you're just gonna hate it. So enjoy life, stay close to your family and friends. You can never take life for granted because one day they're not gonna be here Check in with your peeps and tell them you love them once in a while. It'll go a long way. Enough with that. Now, let's get into the crazy tune deck profile. All right, we're gonna be doing this a little bit different than last time. We're gonna start off with the monsters this time. First off, you gotta go with my main man, the boss monster of the deck. Three, tune Black Luster Soldier, obviously. He is a staple in the deck now. You must run him at three. So his effect state, he cannot be normal summon set, must first be special summoned from your hand by tributing two monsters from your hand or field whose total levels equal eight or more. So what's good about him is if you draw two copies in your first five, you just pitch one to special summon the other one. That's simple. And then if Toon World or Toon, yeah, Toon World, I always say Toon Kingdom because I'm, I'm just so used to playing Toon Kingdom. But if you control Toon World on the field while he's on the field, you could target and banish something on your opponent's side of the field. I mean, that's great, that's what the deck needed, and you definitely gotta run this card at three. Next monsters, you run the two Toon Dark Magicians. You gotta run him at two, at least. I know some builds like to run him at three, but I kinda feel three's kinda cloggy for him, specifically, but he's your searcher of the deck. Cannot attack the turning summon, he has summoning sickness, unfortunately. But while you control Toon World, and your opponent controls no tune monsters car can attack your opponent directly that's that's a typical tune effect but the number one thing you're going to use them for obviously is once per turn you can discard one tune card or one manga right around then activate one of these effects special summon one tune monster from your deck except tune dark magician ignoring its summoning conditions or add one tune spell and trap card from your deck to your hand so depending on what you get what you have in your hand after he special summoned in the field you just activate his effect you pitch something one of your dead tune cards in your hand and you either get a special summon or you get an add very great effect gotta run him at two three's a little bit too cloggy next monster you gotta go with the three red eyes tune dragon i've been play testing this deck quite a bit i actually included my third copy of the tune page flip so when you have three copies you always want to have targets to choose from i had to up the red eyes tune dragon count to three instead of two but he's also a very good monster he's a very good one to hit on page flip because he still has the same summoning sickness and everything but his main effect is once per turn you can special summon one tune monster from your hand except red eyes tune dragon ignoring its summoning conditions this card and tune bls they work hand in hand you get Red Eyes Tune to the field, special summon the Tune BLS from your hand. That's simple. So those three monsters, those are always the ones you want to go in for, for uh, the page flip targets. Those are your main three. You always want to go for, choose each one of those, let your opponent choose one. The Tune Dark Magician and the Tune uh, Red Eyes are the better choice for page flip, but it doesn't hurt to special summon the Tune BLS. Those are the main three monsters, but I also run a few others. I run the one copy of the Toon Harpy Lady. She's great on the search. If you have an extra bookmark or an extra Toon Table of Contents, she's a good at one. You just search her. If your opponent has some back row you want to get rid of, special summon her to the field while you control a Toon Monster. She could target and destroy one of your opponent's back row. So, very good. And then you also got to run the three. Blackstone of Legend, because you want to see your Toon Red Eyes, first thing. This is your starter, the three, Blackstone of Legends. 
his effect reads, you can tribute this card, special summon one level seven or lower red eyes monster from your deck, except red eyes be chick. It plays well with the tune red eyes, get him to the field and then, you know, you go off from there. This card is also a good baiter. If you have other of search spell cards in your hand in your first five and you have this guy, and you know you're, you you got a pretty good idea that your opponent's gonna hit you with an ash or something and you don't want to lose out on your search from tomb table or tomb bookmark, you just normal summon him, activate his effect, let him hit ash on him, and then you just go off with all your other spells. You set up your board, so very good either way. Worst come to worst, if he gets hit with impermanence, you just link him off for Link Curry Bow. Couple more monsters, I also run the one, Eater of Millions. This is more of a going second build, I would say, for the tomb deck. You wanna try to break your opponent's board, you wanna try to let them eat up the cards in their hand. This is a good card, just a free summon. You just banish five from your extra deck, your field, or your hand to special summon him, and he gains 100 attack for every card that's banished face down. And then when he declares an attack on your opponent's monster, you could just shuffle that opponent's monster back into the deck. Worst comes to worst, you get him, you hit Dragoons, shuffle them back in. Simple as that. One Eater of Millions, and also my last two monsters. I run the one Red Eyes Bee Dragon, and the one Dark Magician. This is for your Dragoons play. Gotta run the LOBs, the Ultra Rare LOBs, baby. What's up to all my old school Yu-Gi-Oh players out there? But, you know, you just run the one and one. It sucks when you draw them in your first five, either one of these or both, but Red Eyes Fusion uh, lets you pitch from the hand, so I mean, it's not terrible. Just run the one and one. So that's it for my monster lineup. That's a total of 15 monsters in the main deck. Now we're gonna go on to our traps. I only run two traps in the deck, so I'm gonna just go with the traps first. Run the one Metaverse. You wanna get that Tomb Kingdom out as soon as you can. Metaverse is the perfect card for that. And if you use this card on your opponent's turn, then you could just set the Tomb Kingdom directly to the field without having to banish. It's actually really good. And I also run the one Tomb Terror. It's a counter trap for the tombs. It only has one little slight stipulation. It says you have to control Tomb World and a Tomb Monster in order to activate this card. But when a spell or trap card or monster effect is activated, you negate that division. If you do, destroy that card. It's a very good searcher. If you already have a lot of key pieces in your hand, but you have extra searcher, you just search out the Tomb Terror for a little bit of interruption. Very nice. One and one. There's two traps in the deck total. Okay, now we're gonna go into the spells because you know this tomb deck is full of spells. I gotta show off my new pickup from this past weekend, the new Dragons of Legend Complete series. I'm running the three tomb kingdoms and all three of the variant colors. This is the heart and soul of the deck. The deck can still play without this card, but it's just not as good. You wanna try to bait out your opponent's cards so they do not negate this card. With tomb bookmark now available, it helps from destruction. Tomb Bookmark will banish from the graveyard to protect Tomb Kingdom, which is good. It needed that, but there are cards that banish. There are cards that bounce back to the hand, so you gotta watch out for that. The deck can still function without this card, but it just leaves your monsters vulnerable. If you wanna keep Tomb Kingdom on the field, the effect reads, when this card is activated, you banish three cards from the top of your deck face down. I, to me, that's a very slight cost. That ain't nothing. This card's name becomes Tomb World while I'm in your field zone. Toon Kingdom is Toon World. Your opponent cannot target Toon Monsters you control with card effects as long as this is on the field, so that's very good. If a Toon Monster you control would be destroyed by battle or card effect, you can banish one card from the top of your deck face down for each one of those monsters instead. This is the Regeki Killer, the Dark Hole Killer, the Lightning Storm Killer. If they try to hit you, if they try to hit your monsters, you can just banish to save. I think it's a very low cost and very easy. If it's worth keeping your boss monster on the field, protected, might as well just banish one from the top. But you gotta run three Toon Kingdom. That's a definite staple. Next for the spells, my next right hand man himself, the Toon Bookmark. First off, before I get into this card's effects and everything, man, you gotta appreciate the artwork on this card. It reminds me of like an old school, the old season one anime. You know, the Toon cards, how they look really Toon-like and everything. This card, it looks just like it could fit in that era, you know. Toon Bookmark, though, great addition to the deck. From the set Toon Chaos, very, very great card. It's another searcher for the deck, kind of like Toon Table of Contents, but it's better. Add one Toon World or one card that specifically lists the card Toon World in its text from your deck to your hand. Free search for most of the Toon cards, not all, but most of them. 
if Toon World you control would be destroyed by card effect, you can banish this card from the graveyard instead. So just protection for your Toon Kingdom. Very good. Toon Bookmark. Got to run them at three. Definite staple. All right, the next card, I've been bringing it up a lot. Toon Table of Contents and all three of the color variants again, just like the Kingdom. Toon Table of Contents, very simple. It's not once per turn. Add one Toon card from your deck to your hand. It's as easy as that. If you pull multiples of these, your very first move, if you know your opponent can't stop it, you activate your Toon Table of Contents. You search out the Toon Bookmark. You activate the Toon Bookmark and then you get what you want to search for. But at least it gets your Toon Bookmark into the graveyard. That's where you need it to protect your Toon Kingdom. That would be the best play, I believe. Toon Table of Contents, though, it has to be the best searcher in the game. So you got to run it at three. Next card, also run three of. The three Toon Page Flip. Now, this card, if you control Toon Kingdom or Toon World, Reveal three monsters with different names from your deck. Your opponent randomly picks one for you to special summon, ignoring in summoning conditions. Also shuffle the rest back into the deck. So just a free special summon. It's exactly what the Toon deck needed. It gets Toon BLS, Toon Red Eyes, or Toon Dark Magician to the field instantly. Just all you got to do is control Toon World. Very good card. I upped it to three because you just want to you just want to get Toon Monsters to the field. You want to eat up your opponent's negations and then get as many Toon Monsters to the field with Toon Kingdom so they're protected and your opponent can't really do anything about it after that. Three Toon Page Flip. Also, it's a quick play spell. You could set it, activate it on your opponent's turn if need be. This kind of works good with Metaverse. Next spell, we're running three of. Three Lightning Storm. This is a going second build, like I said before. Even Lightning Storm itself, man. I play it in a lot of decks, and I find it to be mostly in a lot of my main decks. Even if the decks go first, I don't think this card is really too dead because it kind of feels good knowing that you have some kind of destruction in your hand. Even if you go in first and you draw this in your first five, you know, just in case your opponent tries to break your board, they try to beat you, they can't OTK you, but then you draw your next card and you just activate it on this turn, wipe something out of theirs. It's also good pitch fodder, you know, if you got to discard one card or something like that. Or you got to banish you could just choose this you know if you have it in your hand just to get it out of there once your board's established with your toon kingdom and your toon monsters then this card's pretty much dead if you're going first you set up your board your opponent breaks your board on your next turn you hit them with lightning storm and if they can't stop it it's gonna hurt them a lot i run three lightning storms personally i think one of the best cards in the game right now three lightning storms next card my last spell that i'm running three of Three Pot of Extravagance. I know I'm running the Dragoons package in this. It does suck if your Dragoons does or get banished off of this. But Pot of Extravagance, you do need some draw power in the deck. I mean, you have a lot of searchers, but at the same time, you do want to draw some cards as well. You want to get into your combo pieces. You want to set up your board as fast as you can. Pot of Extravagance is great. You banish either three or six cards and you draw one for three or two for six. If you banish your Dragoons, the deck could function very well without Dragoons anyways. But Dragoons is just that little spice, just in case you need a little bit more, you need some negation on your main phase two, you know your opponent's gonna go into something on his next turn or her next turn. You set up your board, you beat them, and then main phase two, you go into Dragoons and just keep leave them there to negate. The deck could perfectly function without Dragoons, so Pot of Extravagance, you gotta run it at three because you need that draw power. And now my two of spell in the deck. I run the two, Comic Hand. A lot of builds are running it at three, like I probably said in the previous video. But the two comic hands, it works perfectly in the deck. Most of the time, you're playing your opponent's monster. It can't be destroyed by card effects. It has some kind of protection around it. Two cards, for instance, like Dragoons and Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon. Once they get their negates off, they're pretty much there. They're a body. You bait out their negate. You activate your Toon Kingdom. Activate your comic hand. Take control of it. Your opponent already wasted a lot of resources setting up for those. This just takes it right away from them and then you can just start beating them. I mean, this won't take control of Dragoons. You could take Dragoons or you could take Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon. Just some examples, but those extra deck monsters sometimes they're hard to get over. Instead, search this out with Toon Bookmark because this card does have Toon World in its text. You search this card out, activate it, you steal that problem some monster and now you're beating them directly. Comic Hand, it's very great at two. It's been working perfectly for me. I would say that that's the proper number. Okay, and then my one of, I run the one, Called by the Grave. RIP to Called by the Grave. It got hit on the recent ban list. It's at one right now. And it's still a very good card though. If you open this in your one, it stops the hand traps. It's also a good defensive card. You can set it down in the field. 
for instance, like the Dark Magician deck, they have that Magician's Rock. Most of the time they get one in their graveyard on the first turn or on their second turn. But if they ain't using no hand traps, you just set this card to the field. And then when they go to normal summon their second rod, you activate this. You banish the rod that's already in their graveyard. And it'll negate the effects of the one that just normal summons, so they will not get their search. This card's very great. Defensive card as well. You gotta run the one called by the grave in the main. My next one of is obviously the terraforming. You gotta search out the Toon Kingdom. You gotta get Toon Kingdom out there as fast as you can to protect your Toon Monster. So terraforming at one. And my last spell of the deck is Red Eyes Fusion. Even if you hard draw this card and you already have your board set up, it's still a great card. You don't need to summon any other monsters but Dragoons to stop your opponent. This card actually works out pretty good. It sucks when it gets banished off your Toon Kingdom activation. You know, this card, it's, it's all around good card. It's worth playing in the deck, definitely. Because you just set up your Toon board, you get Dragoons on the field as well, it's pretty much GG. So one Red Eyes Fusion. Now that's it for the main. That's 23 spells in the main deck total. We're gonna go into the extra deck now. Obviously you wanna run the one, Red Eyes Dark Dragoon. Glad he came out in the 10. I'm glad he's finally available to us in the TCG. Everyone's gonna be seeing a lot of this card. He's pretty much splashable in any deck. And obviously you see him in the tunes now. Good, he's very good. I'll read off his effect. Cannot be destroyed by card effects. Neither player can target this card with card effects. During your main phase, you can destroy one monster your opponent controls, and if you do, inflict damage to your opponent equal to that monster's original attack. So if you use Red Eyes Fusion, you send the vanilla Dark Magician and the vanilla Red Eyes Black Dragon to summon him, you get to do this twice. You get to target destroy monsters twice, up to the number of normal monsters used for the summon. And then his main effect is once per turn when a card or effect is activated. Quick effect. You can discard one card, negate the activation. If you do, destroy that card. And if you do that, this card gains a thousand attack. And that thousand attack is not just for the turn, it's permanent. This dude could get up there and attack points easily. All you gotta do is just negate. You just gotta have a card in your hand to negate something from your opponent. Just remember that a lot of people will get Dragoons onto the field, but they will not have anything in their hand. And then he's pretty vulnerable after that. If you summon him, you wanna at least have one card in your hand to negate. One Red Eyes Dark Dragoon. All right, next monster, you gotta run the one, Predator Plant Verte Anaconda. He has his first effect where you could target a monster on the field and it becomes dark till the end of the turn, but that's not really the main effect of this card. The main effect is you pay 2,000 life points and you send one fusion or polymerization normal or quick play spell from your deck to the graveyard. This effect becomes that spell's effect when that card is activated. Also, you cannot special summon monsters for the rest of the turn. So this card, you activate the Red Eyes Fusion you pay your 2,000, you send the Red Eyes Fusion from your deck to the graveyard, and his effect becomes Red Eyes Fusion, so you get Dark Dragoons out that much easier. So, one Vertanaconda. I also run a little Nightmare Package. One Nightmare Phoenix, one Nightmare Cerberus. No need to explain this too much. The Phoenix pops the back row, the Cerberus destroys a special summon monster. So, run the one and one. The one, Link Karibo, just in case your Blackstone of Legend gets hit with infinite impermanence, negates his effects, you could just link off to Link Karibo, or even your Eater of Millions, he's another level one, something happens where his effects get negated, you can just link him off. So Link Karibo's good, that one. Now into the XYZs, I got my little rank four package, one Castell, one Tornado Dragon, one Abyss Dweller, one Evil Swarm Exiton Knight, one Babushka, and one number 60, Degaris. So I run this little rank four package because a lot of decks in the meta, they run level fours like the Dinos. You hit them with Comic Can, you steal one of their level fours, you get the Toon Harpy Lady out, then you go into a rank four if need be. To tell you the truth, I really don't use too much of these extra deck monsters now besides Dragoons. They're there just in case you need them. These could all are all optional. These are just my choices. But yeah, that's a little rank four package there. And these are my rank sevens. Run the one red eyes flare metal and the number 11 big eye. Now these two, you actually go into a little bit more than all the other ones. If you notice that Toon red eyes and the Toon dark magician are both level sevens. If you also have Toon BLS on the board, you could just save the BLS and you just rank up into Red Eyes, Flare Metal. If you've already done damage to your life points and every time your opponent activates a card right after it resolves, they take 500 damage. 
that card, Red Ice Flare Metal, is actually pretty good. And number 11, too, you could go into him and you could target and take control of one of your opponent's monsters by detaching material. So, number 11, Big Eye, these two are actually really good. Last and not least, I got my two rank eights. I got the one Ding and the one number 38, Hope Harbinger. Now, a lot of the times you get two BLSs on the field and that's actually common, very common. You'll have two BLSs on the board, but also you could comic can. Level eights are very popular too. You comic hand them, you take one over to your side, you rank in to use your BLS and that other level eight and you go into one of these guys. Dingirsu is just that untargetable removal. And the number 38, if you know your opponent has nothing but spells or their hands real low and you know they're going to activate a spell, it's the only way they could save them, just go into number 38 and extend the handshake because it's pretty much over. I just got one in one. It's actually pretty good, pretty decent. So that's it for the extra deck. That was the 15. And now we're going to go into the side deck. Now I built the side deck specifically for this. I've been using the side deck and this is the best I feel that the tunes have to offer right now. Straight from the side deck, first cards we're going into, you gotta run the three, side frame gear gamma, and the one driver. Now, this is the gamma package. You need this to stop your opponent. If you know your opponent's running Dragoons or multiple copies of Dragoons, you activate that side frame gear gamma from the hand once he gets Predator Plant Verta Anaconda and it literally shuts down their whole play. If you could hit Anaconda, it's pretty much over. These cards are very good. It hits multiple other cards in the meta right now. The Dogmaticas. Any extra deck monster that wants to activate effects, this card's great. So I run this little package. Okay, next card from the side deck. Actually run one more of the Eater of Millions, just in case you gotta put two. If they got those monsters that are like untargetable, untouchable, you just get him, you beat over him, you shuffle him back into the deck, easy as that. Now for the bling. I run the three, triple tactics talent. Now, play testing this tune deck, this updated tune deck, I actually was maining this card over the extravagances because I didn't want to banish my Dragoons. This card actually did work out fairly decent. This is the replacement for Call by the Grave. And in the tune deck, this card works great when you're going first because if you're going first, and you try to bait out your opponent, you know they have hand traps, you go and activate your tune table of contents, they could hit it. You could allow them to hit it, and then you could activate this card. And most of the time I go for drawing the two cards because it just gives you another additional two cards and most of the time you're gonna pull another tune table of contents anyway, so it's like it didn't even hurt. But Triple Tactics Talent is definitely the new meta card. It has been seen an increase in price because it is the new called by the grave for now, and it works great in the tune deck. I always want to go second with the main deck that I have, but if I know that I beat my opponent in the first round or they beat me and I know that they're going to be going second, this card right here is great to throw in when you're going first. Triple Tactics Talent, I recommend it. Also, some more of the bling. You got to run the three Forbidden Droplet. This card too, been play testing it from the side. I've been adding it in when I need to, but this card's just a blowout. If you activate this, your opponent can't stop the effect. You discard one card from your hand and most of the time you go into a monster card. You send a monster card to activate this card and your opponent cannot activate monster effects in response to this and the game's pretty much over. It negates all their opponent's face up monsters effects and it halves their attack. This card's just lit. You activate this on the standby phase and your opponent can't do nothing and the game's pretty much over. You break their board, you get over them with the tunes and then you're a happy camper. So forbidden droplet great addition to the deck to the side deck and if you absolutely need it it's there just in case forbidden droplet and then i run the one harpy's feather duster in the side because now that it's unlocked it's at one why not i was playing twin twisters in my extra deck but once this card came out this card pretty much does it you don't want to discard too much in the tune deck the twin twisters did work good but harpy's feather duster is just crazy if you're running across a, a deck that has plenty of back row, stuff like Mystic Mine, you need to get rid of it. Most of the time, Prohibition, now they're going to try to call Harpy's Feather Duster, but they will not know until you activate it. Harpy's Feather Duster will get off the first time you use it, for sure. And then the last three of in my side deck, the blowout card, evenly matched. Got to run it at three. If you absolutely need to, if you're playing against a combo wombo deck and they set up a board, it seems like all the time with the bases loaded, there's five monsters, they all got negates and stuff like that. You hit them with evenly matched, add it in, and this card just blows them out of the water. 
I really don't have to explain this, it's been out. But this card is very underrated in my opinion. It got two prints, but I think it definitely needs another print. So Konami, you're listening to me, got to reprint evenly matched. <laughs> but this card is just great. Evenly matched at three. All right, you guys, that pretty much does it for our deck profile. But before we end the video, I just wanted to shout out a few people from the Instagram and the YouTube community that participated in our last YouTube giveaway. Thank you guys very much. Voltage Gaming, what's up? The Daddis Bizarre Adventure, what's up? The Damaged One, 515, aka Skate Ghost, X1X. Hallo Hallo, what's up, man? TCY TCG, L Patino, 422, Sidra Cards, 91, Wizard TCG, Dark Hole YGO, GT Yu Gi Oh! Future Collector. Ariel Marte P P 96 Ash 14 GEV 100 and Misused. Misused was actually the winner of the giveaway, but everyone that I just shouted out, thank you guys very much. You guys went above and beyond shouting us out on Instagram, commenting on our videos. Nothing but love. We appreciate it very much. Thank you guys again. Myself, Meta Bro J, and all the Meta Bros and the people that are behind us, we all appreciate you guys. Thank you guys very much. On that note, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like this video, comment anything you guys want to see, any future deck profiles. We could build any deck you guys want, just let us know. Also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram, MetabroJ2020. I post up all the new pictures of the new sets that come out, my openings. I take those nice pictures of those fresh, crispy cards. The Instagram fam, aka the Metagram. Shout out to all you guys watching the videos out there. If you guys would like to get the first notification of when we post our new videos up, don't forget to click that notification bell. On your free time, play the decks you guys want to play, you know, test some stuff out. Try this tune deck out yourself. It's just a template for what you guys could build, but this tune deck is just too fun to play and you know Meta Bro J is all over it. The tunes is my favorite archetype. Still gonna be play testing it, trying to upgrade it, trying to update it, and trying to make it the best tune deck possible because one of these days, you never know, you might see a meta bro running a tune deck at a regional. I know it's far fetched, but you just never know. This is your bro, Meta Bro J, to end this off. Thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for more exciting deck profiles from the one and only Super Meta Bros. Have a great day, YouTube. This deck profile has been Super Meta approved. Peace out.